What is up everyone? Thanks for coming by to another video. I know you guys have been looking uh, for some more tips and tricks, stuff that we do with our gear, terminal tackle, etc. whatever. Uh, we're actually going to start out with how to reshaft a bucktail. Obviously, bucktails is probably the most widely used bait, or is the most widely used bait. And they definitely take a beating. Take a look at this, uh, the janky bucktail here. This would be a perfect candidate to start out this uh, this video with. Okay, so why would you reshaft a bucktail? Uh, let's just say that you've caught 10, 15, 20 fish on one bait. Uh, you're gonna have to reshaft that because that can actually break. And uh, obviously you don't wanna leave a bait in a fish. So this would be a perfect candidate. Let's just pretend we just caught a fish on this bait and it comes out of the net looking like this. Some of you I'm sure have seen this before. Okay, so how are we going to fix this? We're gonna put a new wire shaft through. And you can actually buy these wire shafts pre-done with the loop on, on one side. Uh, make sure you buy the straight ones like this. You can also buy wire and a coil. That's not gonna work real easy. So you get these from the musky shop. Uh, I think already done like that. Uh, so at any rate, let's uh, start cutting uh, some components off here. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is get this old garbage heat shrink tubing off. And you're going to want a regular pliers, long needle nose pliers, and just kind of grind away. And that'll actually cut that. And I'll do that all the way up to the hook eye. And look, that's magically fallen off like so. So we're going to grab our split ring pliers and remove this hook because or at this point you may want to even put a new hook on this happens to be a five aught uh, eagle claw 774 okay and we're actually going to need that split ring too so we'll go ahead and remove that as well okay throw that there and then actually let's start with the wire shaft so here's our wire shaft here all right, and actually you're gonna need some heat shrink tubing. I just happen to have some right here. Okay, so maybe we don't quite need this much, but uh, just for the effect, wanted to show you how much heat shrink tubing I hope to use. Okay, so I just grabbed some brand new hooks here. I'm gonna take, I had these pre-cut. Oh, you want them about yay long which is about an inch and a half or so um, and you're going to actually slide this over your hook just like so okay and we're going to grab our split ring which we had before split ring pliers we'll get that started just like that and then at this point i actually take the hook and put it right on the split ring first okay and this is actually, <laughs> when you get uh, used to doing this over and over and over, this will save you some time. Grab the wire shaft, and you're going to put that on at the same time as your hook. All right, and then you're just going to spin that. All right, boom, you're already on there. So we're going to grab this, slide our heat shrink down over. Like so. I don't like it to stick up too much up onto, you know, the hook, the wire shaft there. So keep it kind of, kind of short above the line tie or above the loop rather. Okay, so then we're going to take our lighter. And this is a quarter inch heat shrink tubing. And I've got a number five split ring a lot of guys use a number seven you'll have to use a wider larger piece of heat shrink tubing but this works perfect just like so ready to go all right we'll move on here and by the way this is the only split ring plier you'll ever need it's made by xeron they're only about 15 16 bucks or so as a bait maker uh, any of you out there make baits you know this is the program so we'll leave a link to that uh, down in the description. But at any rate, moving along, let's grab our next tool that we'll need. Will be a Nipex. That is our hook cutter that we have in the boat as well. So you got that right by your side anyway. So we're gonna cut this off, the eyelet, 
And then we like to keep everything, you know, in the same kind of order as we had it, obviously. So first we have a weight. We'll take the weight off. Put that on. Look how much wear is on that egg sinker right there. That thing has been through the ringer. Okay, so the next item we have on here. You know what? We're just going to keep this the janky bucktail. Why not? Just because it's cool. You don't really need a skirt on there probably. The blades are probably enough. Okay, there we go. We got our beautiful skirt there. Isn't that nice? Okay, our next item is a bead. Just for separation of your parts there. And we got our bead, like so. And what do we got next? We actually had a split ring here. This is the original ring where the bait was... Uh, uh, the front hook was actually a lot further down on the bait. And we'll show you why. See how I got this hook way up here on the shaft? Uh, it's a little different, a little modification. We'll talk about that. But So we'll get rid of that split ring. We've got our next skirt. As sad as it looks, the fish still like it. Okay, we'll slide that on. And actually, once in a while, a piece of the skirting material will get caught inside that bead right there and it won't slide real nice there we go now i've got it out so now it falls down nice and neat okay here we go so we're gonna stack our beads another bead put one more on okay now at this point you can see this is my hook i had before i've got that on a split ring a large uh, barrel swivel and another split ring like so and you'll just slide that on there and now you've got complete free motion of that hook all the way around and around this way to prevent uh, the fish you know from torquing and and you know uh, working the bait out of its mouth easier okay so then we'll take a couple more take another bead here one more bead there okay and then we'll grab we'll just grab the original blade and the clevis the clevis is, uh, definitely takes a huge beating, so you may want to replace that. This one is still in okay condition, so we'll put it on there. There we go. One more bead at the top. I've often wondered, do you actually need this bead? Um, maybe it keeps uh, debris from hitting that clevis, possibly. I don't know, but... Everybody's always built a bucktail with the bead at the top. So there we go. So you'll notice now how close this extra hook is to the blade. And I, I think that's really important for especially night fishing uh, when the fish are feeding by feel more so than visually to where they'll actually strike the blade. So it's really important to have that hook close to that blade for that reason right there. And you don't want it too close to the other hook either um, because it's really gonna, one hook's gonna prevent the other from going in, uh, you know, and hooking the fish good. So that is probably the best piece of advice I could give for uh, your hook arrangement on a, a larger bucktail like this. Obviously, uh, they make other bucktails that have, that are just short versions like this Esox Assault uh, this is a double nine, but it's only got one hook there. Uh, if you were going to night fish, though, I would really prefer to have another hook way up here by the blade. So, anyhow, there's our janky bucktail, just like that. And now we're just going to make our eyelet bend. And the tool you're going to need for that, this is a Nipex brand, same brand as your uh, hook cutter here. This is a round nose pliers, okay? So instead of a flat needle nose type deal, they're actually round. And you can see on this particular one, there's actually grooves worn into this thing. I have had this exact same pair of pliers for 15 years. I've made baits with this one pair of pliers and it's worn right through. Uh, I've actually tried to use a newer pair of pliers and I've struggled because it doesn't have the grooves. I would actually probably have to cut the grooves in it to get it to work good for me. But at any rate, okay, so how do you close the loop eye? Obviously, it doesn't have to be pretty. 
um, but to close this eye, and I've bent a few bucktail wires, I like to give it uh, a good half an inch at least, okay? And I'll tell you at the end of this why I like to have that much. I don't like to have it too tight. I like to have a little bit of extra, all right? All right, so my first bend is going to be a 45 degree bend back, just like that. Now normally I wouldn't take the pliers off it, but I just wanted to show you. All right, and the next step, I'm gonna take my thumb and push that wire around the round nose, just like that. And that's the point I'm at right now. I'm almost around. Okay, so to finish your eyelet there, you need to be on an edge surface like this. Just give it a little farther bend. And that's where you're at right there. Just a nice, perfect loop like that. All right, then you're just gonna take the same pliers and just hold it like they were a regular needle nose. Gonna take my thumb, push around, and you definitely will get sore doing this over and over and over. But this is how I make it easier on my body. I'll actually lay it against the inside of my finger and I'm gonna spin that and you can even put the plier inside of the loop and turn it from there. I'll show one more time. This will illustrate it really good. There we go. Now we've got a nice, perfect loop, just like that. All right, so then we'll take our Nipex, nip off that tag end, just like so. Okay, so remember before I made this a little bit longer, so what I'm gonna do here actually is just take this eyelet with my flat pliers and just kink it a little bit, just like so, probably 30, 30 35 degree angle or so. And that way I've now got a keel and that'll kind of help prevent the bucktail, the complete bait from rotating like that. And pretty much you're ready to go. This is ready to catch another 50 inch class fish. So there you go. Now you know how to reshaft your own bucktails. It's very simple. A few simple tools is all you'll need. And uh, that hook placement there, that's definitely one of the biggest tips I could give you, uh, especially for night fishing like we talked about. But, uh, and you could do that with any kind of bucktail, or if you're bored in the winter, you could build your own bucktails. But reshafting that, uh, you know, there's a lot of people that have said, oh, I've caught, you know, 25, 28, 30, whatever fish on one bucktail. And I'm like scared to death that they're going to have that, you know, have that wire shaft break and lose a fish on it. So make sure you reshaft these after 10 fish or so, sometimes even less if the, wire shaft was damaged considerably. So there you have it. Uh, enjoy the winter and we'll see you on the next video.